Hi, I'm Brett Jones, and I'm a professor and motivation scientist in the School of Education at Virginia Tech. The topic of this video is goal orientation theory, which has been a popular theory in motivation over the past two or three decades. The purposes of this video are to explain the different goal orientations and to present some teaching implications based on the findings of goal orientation theory. So let's get started. A goal orientation refers to the reasons why individuals engage in a task. They engage to demonstrate competence to others or to develop their competence where their focus is on learning. So as you can see from these reasons to engage, goal orientations are not the same thing as setting goals for oneself. This is an important point to remember. Rather, goal orientations refer to demonstrating or developing competence. These two orientations have been labeled performance and mastery orientations, where demonstrating competence is labeled a performance orientation, and developing competence is labeled a mastery orientation. This is one basic definition in goal orientation theory, and we can organize this distinction graphically like this. But researchers have also identified other distinctions within these two broader goal orientations. Both performance and mastery goal orientations can be subdivided into approach and avoidance orientations, as shown here. This allows us to identify four different types of goal orientations, performance approach, performance avoidance, mastery approach, and mastery avoidance. Let me define these for you. Performance approach goals focus on demonstrating competence to others. Performance avoidance goals focus on avoiding the demonstration of incompetence to others. You can see that both of these performance goals focus on demonstrating competence, but in the first case, the student is approaching the goal by wanting to show others how good they are. In the second case, the student does not want to appear incompetent. For mastery goals, the first one is mastery approach goals, for which students are focused on developing competence for themselves. That is, they want to master the task and understand it. They're trying to learn the information. For mastery avoidance goals, students are focused on avoiding misunderstandings or not learning the specific task. This one can be more difficult to understand, so let me give you two examples. One example is an older student who believes that his mental functioning and memory is getting worse than it used to be when he was younger. His goal may be to avoid performing worse in the course than when he was much younger. If he was concerned about looking incompetent to others, he would have a performance avoidance goal. But if he was concerned about getting a B in the course, because he had typically gotten A's in his younger years, then he would have a mastery avoidance goal because he's comparing his performance to an internal standard that he has set for himself. Another similar example is a student who has set really high standards for herself. If she believes that she's not doing well in her class, she may become concerned that she will not meet her high standard. She wants to avoid not mastering the information and reaching her high standard. Maybe some of you can relate to this goal. Okay, now I'm going to give you a quiz to see if you understand the difference between these four goal orientations. For this quiz, Label each of the following examples as one of the following. Performance approach goal, performance avoidance goal, mastery approach goal, or mastery avoidance goal. The first one is a student who says, I like assignments that allow me to learn new things, even if I make some mistakes on them. Pause the video if you need a little more time to think about it. Because this student is focused on developing his competence, even if he makes mistakes, it's considered a mastery approach goal. Let's do another one. I'm interested in my classwork, so I put a lot of effort into it. Pause the video if you need to. I tried to trick you by giving you another one that was similar to the last example. This one is also a mastery approach goal. Mastery goals are often measured with items like this that assess a student's interest or enjoyment. This student says, I want to show the other students that I know more than they do. This student demonstrates a performance approach goal because she actively desires to demonstrate her competence to the other students. Here's the next one. I don't want to look dumb in class by not knowing the answers. This one is a performance avoidance goal because he's concerned about how others will perceive his competence and he doesn't want to seem incompetent to them. This student says, it's important that I do my homework so that I don't embarrass myself in class tomorrow. This one is similar to the last one because the student is concerned about what others think 
and she wants to avoid looking incompetent, which would embarrass her. Let's do another one. I really want to understand the concepts in algebra this year. This student is demonstrating a mastery approach goal because he's focusing on developing his competence. This student says, I'm worried that I might not be able to remember everything that I want to learn in this class. This is an example of a mastery avoidance goal. It's a mastery goal because the student is focused on her own standards and not focusing on trying to demonstrate her competence to others. It's an avoidance goal because the focus is on what she might not be able to remember, as opposed to saying that she wants to learn as much as she can in the class. Okay, hopefully this gives you a better feel for each of these four goal orientations. Now you may be wondering, why are goal orientations important? Well, researchers have tried to identify differences between mastery and performance goals on outcomes such as attributions, affect, cognition, and behavior. Generally, students with mastery goals are more likely to use effort attributions than students with performance goals, who are more likely to use ability attributions. This is important because we know from attribution theory that students who attribute their failures and successes to their effort tend to be more motivated to engage in similar activities in the future. When someone fails and attributes it to a lack of their stable ability, they tend to feel helpless and unmotivated to participate in that activity in the future. In terms of affect, students with mastery goals tend to be more interested in and enjoy tasks more than students with performance avoidance goals. For cognition, students with mastery goals tend to use more effective learning strategies. Although the research is really inconclusive for students with performance goals, sometimes students with performance approach goals actually outperform students with mastery goals. Some of the problems in interpreting this research is that early on, researchers did not always distinguish between approach and avoidance. With respect to behavior, students with mastery goals are more likely to try challenging tasks, while students with performance goals are more likely to choose easier tasks because they're focused on demonstrating their competence to others. Students with mastery goals want challenges so that they can develop their competence. Overall, it would be nice to say that mastery goals are good and performance goals are bad, but it's simply not that easy. Several studies have found that performance approach goals lead to outcomes as good as mastery goals, and sometimes students with performance approach goals have outperformed students with mastery goals. This is probably a good time for me to mention a few caveats to what I've been explaining so far. First, researchers label mastery and performance goal orientations differently. Some use the terms learning goal, task goal, task involved goal, ego involved goal, or something else. So although I've been talking about these mastery and performance goals in one way, I wanted you to be aware that not everyone uses the same terminology in their theories. So as you can imagine, definitions for these different concepts also vary. In this video, I've been trying to use definitions that are generally the most commonly used and accepted. Also be aware that students can have multiple goals. Thus, results are difficult to summarize in a short video such as this because the nuances are important. I encourage you to examine specific research studies if you're really interested in goal orientation theories, as researchers will continue to try to understand what goal orientations are and how they lead to different types of outcomes. As with most motivation theories, researchers have found that instructors can have an impact on students' goal orientations. The difficult question is what should instructors do if performance approach goals lead to outcomes that are similar to mastery goals, then which goals should teachers be trying to promote? Well, there's pretty good evidence that performance avoidance goals are not good. So we can identify some teaching strategies that may minimize the chances that students will adopt performance avoidance goals and that will be more likely to promote mastery goals. TARGET is an acronym that has been used to summarize some of the instructional practices that have been associated with promoting mastery goals. The T stands for task and relates to the design of the learning activities. I won't go into a lot of explanation here, but briefly, the learning activities should include variety, challenges, be organized, and be perceived as interesting and useful. The A stands for authority, because students should have opportunities to take responsibility for learning, to make decisions, and to assume leadership roles. The R stands for recognition, which involves incentives and rewards focused on individual effort, improvement, and accomplishments. The G is for grouping, which indicates that teachers should use heterogeneous grouping structures that promote peer collaboration and cooperation. The E is for evaluation, 
because teachers should implement evaluation systems that are varied, private, and assess individual progress, improvement, and mastery. The final T stands for timing, which indicates that students should have the opportunity to plan schedules and complete assignments at the appropriate and optimal rate. Now let's examine how these instructional practices that can promote a mastery goal orientation can fit into a model of motivation based on many other theories as well. The music model of academic motivation provides key motivation principles for instructors to consider when designing instruction. This model is based on an analysis of many motivational theories. A more complete explanation of the music model is provided elsewhere, such as in Jones 2009 and at the motivatingstudents.info website. However, it's helpful for instructors to consider how this model relates to the instructional strategies that can promote a mastery goal orientation. The music model states that instructors need to ensure that students believe that they have some control over some aspect of their learning, understand why the content is useful, believe that they can succeed if they put forth the effort, are interested in what they're supposed to be learning, and believe that the instructor cares about whether they meet the course objectives. These five key principles can be remembered by using the acronym MUSIC. Here, I've tried to make connections between the target acronym and the MUSIC model. As you can see, authority and time are most directly related to empowerment. The task includes elements of usefulness. Success perceptions are important when considering the task, recognition, evaluation, and time. It's also important that the task is interesting, and the grouping is most directly related to caring. I want to warn you that this is not intended to be a complete analysis of these ideas. I've simplified them here. But even so, it's clear that the ideas represented by target are consistent with the teaching strategies that have been identified as fostering motivation in other motivation theories. So by using these types of strategies, teachers are also implementing effective strategies that can foster students' motivation. Because goal orientation theory is focused on developing or demonstrating competence, ensuring that students succeed when they try hard is a very important way to motivate them, which is evident by the fact that several of the items in the target acronym are very directly related to the success component of the music model. I hope that this video was helpful to you. I've provided the citations for my references here. I have links to other information and videos on my website at www motivatingstudents.info. Feel free to contact me by email at brettjones at vt.edu.